Hi, Randy K7AGE. In this video, I explain sound card interfacing. If you're interested in PSK or the digital modes, you'll need a sound card interface. I start off explaining some of the basic things that are needed for the audio connection between the computer and the radio, and also for push to talk for transmit. I then explain what some of the simple interface boxes are that can that go between the radio and the computer. Then I move on to the newer style boxes that have the USB sound card built in. And then at the end I talk about a little bit about the newer radios that have the sound card circuitry built inside. I just need a single USB connection. I've done this video a little bit differently. It's a whiteboard talk from here on out. and. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my videos before, please press the subscribe button. If you like this, you can please give me a thumbs up. I'm available, you can follow me on Twitter and Google Plus, and uh, be interested in your comments uh, how you like this different style of doing my video. So, we'll move on to the whiteboard, K7AGE. With PSK31 being such a popular digital mode, this is what many people try for the first time. So this video is about the various sound card interfaces that you need to think about. Once you have the interface working for PSK31, there's many other modes that are open to you to use. One of my most popular YouTube videos is where I show people how to receive PSK very quickly by pressing the computer's microphone by the radio speaker to pick up the audio. You can be receiving PSK31. Four things to think about. Number one is the audio from the radio to the computer. Number two is audio from the computer to the radio. Number three is push to talk, how you will place the transmitter and transmit. And number four is read control. It's nice and it's optional. So this is what you typically have. is a computer with a sound card built inside, which has an audio input and an audio output connector, and your radio, which has a microphone input and a headphone output connectors on the front. Now if I connect the output of the headphone to the audio input on the computer, this will work if your input on the computer is a line level input. Many computers nowadays only have mic level inputs available, which is a much lower signal than what is the high level signal coming out of your radio. So this gives you a level mismatch which, which may overload the audio front end in the computer. So a line level on a computer is typically 100 to 1000 times greater than a mic level. Line level is around a 1 volt peak to peak signal, whereas a mic level can be around 10 millivolts to 1 millivolt. A way to correct this problem is to using a resistor voltage divider with a 100 to 1 ratio. So I come out of the radio through a 10K resistor in series to a 100 ohm resistor to ground. If I tap off for the microphone input at the junction of the two, that signal there will be 100 times lower than what goes in or what comes out of the radio. And I can also use transformers with this to provide ground isolation between the computer and the radio. Many radios have connectors on the rear of the radio as well. A audio out, an audio in, and a push to talk. If you don't have separate connectors, these signals may be available on a multi-pin connector. Now the audio output is typically line level and it's fixed. So as you vary the AF volume on the radio, the level stays fixed and does not change. Audio input on the rear of the radio may be mic level, which is low, or line level, which is high. You'll have to check your manual to see what you have. And there's also a connector for a push to talk signal. So you can use the interfaces that I've shown connecting to the headphone and microphone jack to the jacks on the rear of the radio. But something to watch out for is that not all radios will allow Vox to be used with audio input on the rear of the radio. So a method to generate push to talk for the radio is by using a serial port on the computer with either the RTS or the DTR command pins through a opto isolator switch connected to the push to talk input on the rear of the radio. The opto isolator also provides ground isolation. Most computers don't have a serial port anymore, so you can use an external USB to serial port dongle. When using the serial port to generate your push to talk, you typically have to go into the configuration setup in your software for your digital program and tell it to use the serial port for push to talk, choose the COM port that you're using, and then select either RTS or DTR. Okay, once we have our cables connected, now we need to think about setting the audio level. We do not want to overdrive the transmitter. We do not want to cause distortion. We do not want to cause splatter on the band. 
So you want to watch your ALC, your automatic level control indication on your meter. You'll have to look at your manual to see how to set this properly. We want to turn off any audio processing, so that means any audio compression, turn it off. Any EQ that you may have, turn it off. Our goal here is to operate our audio level in the linear portion of our power output curve. As you can see, as we increase audio level further, power output does not continue going up. At that point, we've saturated the system, we're causing distortion, we're probably splattering on the band. So you want to back off the audio level so that you're ensured that you're operating in the linear portion. This is what the band looks like when you see multiple PSK signals. Ideally, you should just see two vertical lines close together. Those are properly adjusted. The fellow on the end there, he is overdriving his transmitter and he's causing multiple vertical lines. So you can see his signal is quite a bit wider. When you're operating PSK, ask the other station what your, what your signal looks like and he will tell you if you're too wide. If you are, adjust your audio properly. And when all else fails, read the manual. The read control connection from the computer to the radio allows your software and the radio to read things like the frequency display in order to log properly. It may also provide a button that you can press to change the frequency or change bands. This requires a second serial port in addition to the one for the push to talk. So everything I've talked about you can buy in a what I'm going to call the traditional sound card interface. This is a box that goes between the audio ins and outs of the radio and the computer to a serial port on the computer to generate a push to talk for the radio. Many times this interface box will connect to the rear connector on the radio, which means you have to order the correct cable with the box. So examples of these are from Tigertronics, their SL1 Plus. West Mountain Radio has the Rig Blaster series. Easy Digi has assembled end kits available on eBay. Buxcom with their Rasco interfaces, and there's many others out there. So many of the interfaces now have moved the sound card circuitry out of the computer into a standalone box that connects to a USB cable to the computer and a radio specific cable to the rear connector on the radio. So it's one cable from the computer to the box and one cable from the box to the radio. The box typically has a Fox circuit inside so when it hears audio from the computer it'll key the push to talk. You need to be careful about the applications that are running on your computer because if you have your mail program up and you get a mail message in you do not want to have you've got mail going out on 20 meters. These boxes typically have audio level controls and LED status indicators on the front. Example of these are again from Tigertronics, their Signal Link USB, West Mountain Radio with their Rig Blaster Advantage, Time Wave with their Navigator, and there's others available. So now the next progression is to move the sound card interface into the radio. So now no box is required from the computer to the radio. A single USB connection handles both the audio and rig control. This is built into the radio. This is now available on many of the new ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu radios. A couple things to watch for as I wrap up the video. One, be very careful how you adjust your audio input level to the transmitter. You do not want to be overdriving or causing distortion or be seen as wide. Push to talk is something you need to think about. If you're going into the front, the Vox will work. If you're going in the back, it may or may not work. If it doesn't work, you can use a serial port either from the computer or from a USB to serial port dongle to generate a logic level through a switch circuit to interface to the push to talk circuitry. And the newer radios will deal with push to talk through commands through the serial line, not logic level, but command. So for now, 73 from K7AGE. The sound card radio, interface to the radio. Now watch this. This is very high tech, noise, especially when you take transmit. the microphone. So these types of devices have a transformer put it on the in there. It has a no cables back, plugged in, no attenuators, no transformers. Computer, this will get you receiving um, the just DTR, a few minutes. If everything's working, you should have. Um, signals in the bottom of the transmitter. I still have the microphone control open here in and out. See if I turn this all the way down and then it has another jack. Actually I have a lot of level here. Cable.